for joining us for this edition of Bar Rhythms. I'm Terrence Afram Anderson. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had a challenge that you felt you could not overcome? Have you ever felt that you wanted to give up? Have you ever felt that you need to be a superhero? Superheroes are not just made on television. They're not just characters in fiction. Superheroes are real. And there's a person that I have come to meet in my life who I know is a real hero. She's overcome incredible odds. She has stood on the top of mountains because she's had the perseverance and the resolve and the determination to succeed despite all odds set against her. It is my great pleasure to introduce you today, Miss Kimberly R. Tucker. Kimberly L. Tucker. Yes. Yeah, after that great introduction, I got the middle name mixed up, but I want to get into our conversation here. And I want to say to you that uh, this edition of Bio Rhythms is brought to you by KRT LLC, Tank Cleaning with a Woman's Touch. Bar Rhythms is brought to you by KRT LLC, providing full service tank cleaning, painting, fire watch, and shipboard maintenance for marine, industrial, government, and commercial businesses. The KRT website is www.k-r-tllc.com, and you can call them at 757-228-3452. KRT LLC, your leading provider in quality shipboard solutions. Kimberly L. Tucker. Where are you from, Kimberly? Originally from Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Pennsylvania. Yes. What part of Philly? Uh, southwest, Southwest Philadelphia, right off of 52nd Street between um, Whitby and 52nd Street. What kind of What kind of neighborhood was that? You know, we always hear the. the <gasps> well, you know, the typical low-income housing area type, uh, rundown people hanging on the corners, drugs, things like that. So it, it took, no doubt, a, a bit of perseverance to endure uh, living in those kinds of, uh, uh, in that kind of environment. And, and you know, I, I, if we can, I'd like to just talk about what makes you such a remarkable woman. Were there things that, uh, that made you stronger? Were there experiences that you had that, that put steel in your blood? I guess from my childhood, growing up, I was the middle girl of seven. Um, I wanted to know that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, four brothers and it was three girls. And just watching my mom and always wanting her attention, but I guess for me, I could never capture. It was always my older brother and sister that always caught her eye. I could never do anything, I guess, to... I would always try to clean up the house just so I could get her attention, get her to notice me. Um, I would just try and do crazy things because I, I wanted my mother to say, well, jo you know, good job, Kimberly. You know, I, I want to, to take a, a momentary detour here to remind our viewers, you know, why that you are on the show, because you are indeed a success story. So some of the things that you will hear now are going to blow your mind, but at the same time, I want you to stick around and listen and pay close attention, because this woman navigated through some remarkable challenges to run a million-dollar corporation all her own. Um, so, you um, uh, you wanted your mom's attention, yeah. and you were the middle the middle child. Well, middle of the girls. Of the girls. And it was my older brother and sister who, I guess, got the majority of the attention. The attention from my point of view, because they got to go off to college, and I would tell my mom, "Well, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that." Just trying to do anything that would capture her noticing me. So when I came and said, hey, mom, I want to go to college, and she told me that I wasn't college material, and that kind of broke me from wanting to do anything and watching my older brother and sister go off and, and do their thing. And then I just became rebellious because, and angry because I felt so unloved. Mm -hmm. So um, I was put out of the house and then... How old were you then? Maybe about 17, because I remember working at Burger King, um, just trying to find my way in through life since I was in college material and I needed to find what Kimberly Tucker could do. Now, did your mom ever define what college material was? She never defined, no, she didn't. But looking at my older brother and sister, I guess, 
because they are such scholars, they're doctors. Mm -hmm. um, my sister has two PhDs, masters, and just she's still in school. Matter of fact, she runs a college. So, and well, then my I'm sure they're pretty proud and impressed with what you've been able to accomplish. Um, you got a job at Burger King. And I remember working there. That was my first job, by the way, Burger Really? I made a dollar and 35 cents an hour. I decided to do that because my older brother, he used to work at this thing called Arthur Treacher's. Oh, yeah. Fish and Chips. Fish and back chips. in Philly. Yeah. And that was an old spot, and I went there to get a job, and I don't think they hired me. But through all the things that me and my mom had gone through, and I was put out of the house, then I went to work at Burger King, and I found kind of solace there because I could go to work and I felt somewhat, some type of worth, self-worth there, because I was working, you know? And how long were you at Burger King? Not long, because I remember living in the streets. Uh, so you were homeless at the time? I was homeless, yeah, because my mom put me out. Mm -hmm. And I remember sleeping in the cars and in Philly, you know, the snow gets all the way up to your knees. Mm -hmm. So I just remember those eras and me leaving. Actually, I met um, my first husband on a basketball court, and I was running a room over on 54th and Cedar in Philadelphia. And I met Ronald, and we got together, and I got pregnant, got married, and he went to the Navy to help support mm -hmm. uh, me, and the, me and Tiffany. And Tiffany. <laughs> me and Tiffany, and... Something had happened. Uh, someone had broken into my apartment, and I wind up moving here to Norfolk, with Ronald Tucker still in the Navy. Okay. So, a lot of things happened when I came here, um, living in different neighborhoods, getting. What kind of neighborhoods? Where did you live? Well, when I came here, I lived in off of Piccadilly. Piccadilly. And Piccadilly. I had no idea what that was. I, I thought it was like an old Navy type of neighborhood because a lot of military people lived there, but it was just like a low-income housing area because the rent was cheap and they were four-unit apartment buildings in these broken down buildings. Okay. You know, Ronald found that place for us so he could get me out of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Tucker, owner of KRT, who's telling us a very compelling and interesting story. So you moved to some place in Norfolk I had never heard of before, Piccadilly. Piccadilly, uh, yeah, off of Piccadilly. Uh, off of Piccadilly Street. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, where did you go from Piccadilly? You said you moved. I to? moved into 126 Allen Street. It was called Ben Morrell Navy Housing. Ben Morrell Navy Housing. Yeah. Okay, I'm familiar with that. Because my okay. husband, uh, my first husband, he was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he was an engine man on the USS Vulcan. I see. Okay. So, so from, uh, where did you go from there? This is uh, Ben Morrell. Did you move to another? You went to several places? Actually, after I, I lived in Ben Morrell maybe a good eight or nine years. Oh, really? Because I didn't move out of there until they were actually closing down and refixing all of the houses. Oh, I see. I see. So what was life like? Life was kind of difficult there at uh, on Ben Morrell because my husband, he was in the Navy, mm -hmm. and he got addicted to uh, crack cocaine. So being a second class in the Navy, and I remember taking my children down to the brig on Allen Street just to visit him and trying to maintain bills and things. Uh, after a while, he had our allotment cut off because he had to, again, feed his habit. So I just went through a really crazy transformation, trying to take care of my two babies and deal with everything with Ronald and the Navy. But at one point, I got to the point where I didn't even care about the money. I just needed him to be okay with where he was at with those drugs and what 
it just it just did to him. You know, he was on he was a, he was a second class in the Navy, and he got busted all the way down to a fireman. So can you imagine the pay drop yeah. and having to deal with just paying bills and and taking care of kids? It was kind of hard for me. Where where is Ronald now? Uh, Ronald's in, actually in Philadelphia, and he's been clean for five years. And I saw him last weekend. I was there, and I'm so proud of him. He he's okay with your sharing the story. He is okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He is okay. I got two great kids out of that marriage, mm -hmm. Tiffany and Ronald. And besides that, he was an since he was an injurman, I got to learn all about tanks from him. Interesting. I used to go visit him on his days that he had duty on the ship, mm -hmm. and he would be in the engine room um, sounding some tanks. He'd have to write things down, and that just kind of fascinated me. So I would always ask him a bunch of questions. And you know, engine men, they're always the last ones when the ships pull in mm -hmm. to leave the boat because they have to tie up. They're responsible for shutting down certain things in the engine room. Uh, so I just found it very fascinating. You, you shared with me that when you were a little girl, you wanted to be a diesel mechanic? A diesel engine so mechanic. you always had this kind of interest in, in industry. Um, to, to I degree. think watching my dad, okay. James Hurst, he worked two jobs to take care of seven children. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to be just like my dad. He was hardworking, and he worked at the cleaners. He worked several jobs just feeding his family. And that's where I got my tenacity, watching Daddy, you know. So let's let's get back to the whole situation. You're you're dealing with a, a husband who had uh, uh, experienced a precipitous decline in his in his rank in the military, which yes. meant that the 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 pay was cut as well, and he was dealing with an addiction. How did that impact the family? Well, I became extremely depressed. Mm -hmm. um, I also got addicted to that drug. Uh, crack. I wind up being charged with the welfare fraud, mm -hmm. going to jail, and God just speaking to me why I'm laying there because I tried to, it was so funny because I just kept going back to jail for probation violation. No one would hire me as a felon. Mm -hmm. So once I started uh, some of my time you know, God just started, kept coming to me and talking to me and me laying there in the dorm with 60 girls uh, just waiting for my next place to go to, mm -hmm. uh, to complete some of my time. It was, it was hard. Tiffany and Ronnie used to come up every Wednesday to see me. That was difficult. That was really difficult, yeah. seeing them through the glass talking with them on the phone and, and not being able to just touch them, hug them. Mm -hmm. But that experience taught me so much being behind the wall. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know the lesson that God was actually teaching me while I was there until he freed me. Tell us about that lesson. Oh, well, lesson. when I asked God, because he would often come to me and tell me, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. So God would say, tell me, when you get out, you're gonna start a company. And I was like, God, the only thing I know how to do is tank clean. I've been doing that for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, working uh, different shipyards throughout Hampton Roads, and just knowing the tank cleaning skill, I just came to love it. So when you, on one of those occasions, when you got out, you were able to get a job, doing just that. Uh, yes. Previously, though, there have been multiple times where you could not be employed and, and you found yourself caught in a recidivism cycle. That's when the minimum wage was $3 an hour and I was working two jobs day and night just because our rent was maybe $350 mm. and trying to pay that, uh, afford lights, um, food, things like that, and that's what made me get on assistance. And then getting into my own addiction behind depression and trying to take care of two children, not having my husband no longer with me to kind of help me um, rear things and straighten out things. It was kind of devastating for me. But getting on track 
was when I was behind the wall and God began to do just a great work in me. But when I came home and I couldn't figure out since God had said, okay, I want you to do this tank cleaning because that's what I know. So I came out and I started KRT, Belgian Tank Cleaning. And then from there, um, the first year I made $1,200. But you turned that uh, exponentially. Okay, we're going to take a break now. We're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk all about KRT LLC. <laughs> What is KRT LLC? It stands for Kimberly, Ronald, and Tiffany. Okay. And I know what the LLC is. Limited, <laughs> Limited Liability right. Corporation. I named my company because that was like a dedication to my children for persevering through this thing with me, this walk through life, mm -hmm. some of my trials and tribulations, and, and reaching a milestone for me when my daughter wanted to go to college, and I could help pay for that. And every time she called and said, hey, mom, uh, the bill is due. <laughs> They're going to kick me out. And being able to do that and just seeing how God had set up everything with the company and making sure the money was there in order for me to do that. And that was a blessing. So, so what is the company? Uh, You've mentioned uh, tank cleaning. So t not everybody knows what a tank is, a well, ship tank anyway. Yes. Um, these are different types of tanks on ships. Well, they have the feed water, fresh water, fuel tanks, CHT tanks, and we clean them. We run a setup, we gas free, and clean the tanks for our customers. What is CHT? Is it a uh, chemical holding. Those are your poopy tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I and asked. your gray water tanks. Yeah, those are your number two tanks. Yes, <laughs> okay. sanitary tanks. Uh, so. Uh, you spoke earlier. Um, you've gone from that 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 past to running a million dollar corporation yeah. with offices in Portsmouth. Yes, I actually in Berkeley. In Berkeley, I'm sorry, Berkeley. Yes. Uh, San Diego. San Diego. And, and just did one in Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, with a partner. And you mentioned that um, you got a contract at one point to clean 500. I'm working on that as we speak. Uh, okay. solidifying everything. They called me up last week and I was really shocked and said that you come highly recommended. You have a tradition of hiring ex-felons. Uh, remembering what it was like for you trying to get a job and finding it so difficult, finding only a job at, uh, you know, at some fast food joint or something, but why do you hire ex-felons? Because God has shown me from the path um, that I was on and where I winded up in prison and trying to stay out from going back behind the wall. Mm -hmm. They kept charging me with probation violations. So I know how hard it is. I know people aren't out here not hiring felons. Mm -hmm. So God has instructed me through my process of coming out. This is what I must do. So and for 14 years, that's what I do. Fourteen years you've been hiring. I've been fellas. in business, yes. And and what is the the what is the process when you hire them? They they work for you for a specific period of time. Is that um, what I like to think? God has challenged me to find work in my industry uh -huh. in order to keep them gainfully employed. So they have fines, uh, just being able to sustain out here with an apartment, um, pay their bills. Uh, get their hair done. You know how good that feels. Sure, sure. Um, Just making you feel good about yourself. Uh, can you give us, without mentioning a name, a particular success story that comes to mind of someone that you've hired as, a, as an expert? Well, recently I just, a gentleman came out from a particular prison here mm -hmm. after doing 10 years, 
We just put him in his apartment last week. Also a lady, uh, she came back home after doing three years. So they're employed with KRT and they're living in their apartment. And I got living room furniture and just got a lot of things donated to them. And I was over there last week just helping them put up curtains and do little things just to make it a home. And these are people that are working for you? Yes. Okay. Right, and then. just to see how their transformation coming from where they were at for those years and to come home and being able to do that. That's nothing but a blessing. But you're not stopping there. You, you, oh, you're no. working with ex-felons, uh, with KRT, but you've also started Tiffany House. What is yes. Tiffany House? Well, Tiffany House, it's a home for ladies coming home from prison. I noticed with this particular lady, she needed to have an address in order for them to release her from prison. So I wanna do things like that for ladies and also with my program, placing them into my home because it's no place for them to come to. It's no, actually, I guess, programs for women mm -hmm. out here. So I've created one with my experience from behind the wall and doing what God has led me to do, create this company so I can serve people. Uh, what is the, the population? What, what numbers of people uh, live in Tiffany House? Well, we're starting off with six ladies. Okay. Uh, because we're doing a pilot program with some of the judges, the drug court judges, okay. where I've gotten six spots at TCC for phlebotomy. And the reason why I picked that, because being a felon, you can't have an RN and you can't become have your LPN, but you can be able to draw blood. And I needed to create jobs where people can have benefits. So because, they're, they're training to become phlebotomists? Yeah. You're, you're pretty I pick incredible. that. And if they choose, they can be tank cleaners and go through that also. But it's so many things out here for felons, and people don't know, either don't know about it, or they just don't have that exposure where they can go and actually get help. So we're creating our website with the Tiffany House to put things on our site where they can go and get these different types of help. And, and what is that website address? Uh, that it's www.k dash r dash t llc dot com okay. and, and www dot krt dot com and folks can find information about Tiffany House through um, the Tiffany House website uh, I don't actually have that website my okay. daughter told it to me tonight okay. but I didn't write it down but there is one well I mean you you old school like me the technology is is yeah. there we just did the uh, Tiffany House skating party at the Green Bar skating ring for children of incarcerated parents. Is that the one I attended? Or was that yes, that's okay. exactly okay. the one that okay. you attended. And just giving back to people who are less fortunate, right. you know, that can't find these jobs where they're making $70,000 a year and their children need things. Well, I, I'm sure that these people feel like uh, coming from the experience of where they are now, that they're probably making about a million dollars a year. And I'm sure that you're instilling dreams in these people, the, oh, the, no the, doubt. the yeah. passion and the tenacity to pursue their, no, their own dreams. Yeah. Kimberly, I want to thank you so very much. I wish we had several hours to talk, uh, but this has been very insightful and inspiring, and I'm sure it will prove the same for us. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Our Rhythm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.